All right, the other type of continuous distribution that I want to make sure that you're introduced today is an exponential distribution. Okay, now exponential won't be too surprising. It'll look a little different than what you're used to, but not too surprising. An exponential distribution will start at a specific value, which we're going to just label as lambda. That's our y-intercept when x equals 0. And then it goes down with a somewhat exponential function like this. It does have an asymptote. It won't ever reach there. However, if it does go on infinitely, then eventually it will not quite almost get there. If that makes sense. You know how asymptotes work. So anyway, this line right here will be described by the function f of x equals lambda, which is that, but that value right there, our starting value, e to the negative lambda x. So as x progresses, as x is getting bigger and bigger, the negative number up here at the top is getting bigger and bigger, and so therefore f of x will continue to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So that should kind of make sense. So that's our, that's our uh, probability density function. All right. Um, and this will be represented simply by x exponential with lambda, because lambda is the only thing really that we need to know. It always has the e, it always has the negative and the x, and it always has those lambdas. Now, a couple of things that need to be noted is that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Uh, it's going to mess things up if it's negative. The other thing is that lambda must be greater than 0. It can't be 0 because then it would be right on the asymptote. That would be an issue. Uh, the other problem is, is that uh, it has to be positive, not negative, so that we end up with a positive uh, probability here. Okay, so other than that, uh, the domain can be anything from 0 on and on forever. And that's essentially our exponential distribution. So a couple of things I want to look at. First, I want to look at, okay, well, can we show that this is really a probability density function? It's that it's a well-defined PDF. Okay, so is it correct? Well, remember, for it to be correct, that means that the area here needs to be equal to 1. So in order to do that, we need to do the integral from 0 all the way up to infinity of f of x dx and hopefully that will end up giving us 1 okay um, so if, if we do that then we end up having the integral from 0 to infinity of um, lambda times e to the negative lambda x and of course the constant can come out just like that so then we got lambda integral from 0 to lambda e to the negative lambda x. Uh, sorry, I forgot to write the dx there. It needs to be equal to 1. It needs to be equal to 1. And remember that the integral of e to the negative lambda x, you, well, integral of e to the x, remember the integral of e to the x, oops, is simply e to the x. All right, now because of the constant here, then the integral is going to be multiplied by 1 over that negative. So it'll end up being lambda integral e to the negative lambda x times negative 1 over lambda from 0 to infinity dx. And hopefully, this is all going to give us 1, right? So we can evaluate this. If x is infinity, that means that this becomes essentially 0. And so I end up with lambda. And then this will be negative 1 over lambda. If x is 0, then this f essentially becomes, uh, sorry, 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 I made a mistake there. Good thing you caught me there. So if I put in infinity, this becomes e to the negative infinity, which is essentially 0. 0 times negative 1 over lambda is 0. And then I go minus. And if I put 0 in here, then it will be e to the 0. And e to the 0 is 1. 1 times negative 1 over lambda is negative 1 over lambda. And of course, then we get that this is equal to, sorry, I don't need the dx there. I already did the integral. So I get lambda times 1 over lambda which is 1. 
So I've shown that this is actually a PDF. That could be done with any constant, right? So if you had a number there, then all you would have to do is put in the number for lambda, and you could work it out, and you could show that it is a valid PDF. Okay, um, so let's consider one. Let's just say for a moment that uh, maybe lambda equals 2. Okay, so if lambda equals 2, then I now have my density function f of x equals 2 e to the negative 2x. All right, and let's uh, find the expected value of x. Okay, well, we haven't really learned this yet. Um, for now, you're just going to have to believe me that for an exponential, then ex is simply 1 over lambda. And you're going to have to just believe me that the variance of x is simply 1 over lambda squared. And so that makes this very easy because that means the expected value here is just 1 over 2 and the variance is just 1 over 4. And so for exponential it will be very straightforward and easy. Uh, hopefully at some point we'll get to where, we're, where we can prove this and so that you'll be able to see that. But for now we're just going to have to, uh, to deal with that. Okay? Now let's consider an interesting question. Let's say uh, that it now asked for the median of this probability density function. So how in the world would I get the median? Well, remember that the median is just the 50th percentile, right? So if we say that the median is m, then all I need to do is find the area that goes up to 50%. We've already shown that the area for any one of these is simply 1. And so now I just need to do the area. So I do the integral from 0 to whatever that m value is of 2e to the negative 2x dx. And I want that to be equal to 50, right? 0 0.50. And if I can show that the integral is equal to 0 0.50, then I found the center value because that will be where 50% of the data is. Okay, so that should be then fairly easy to, to do as long as you remember how to do an integral. The 2, of course, is going to come out, so I'll have 2 integral from 0 to m, e to the negative 2x dx, hopefully equals 0 0.50. Integral of negative e to the 2x will then become e to the negative 2x. Because there's a linear up there, I now need to multiply by negative 1 over 2, the reciprocal of this right here, right? and then evaluated from 0 to m. No, no more dx. I already took the integral. equals 0.5. And so then I can put these numbers in. And so I'll have, uh, I guess the negative 1 half is going to be the same. So 2 times negative 1 half is going to just be negative 1. And then I'm going to have e to the negative 2m minus e to the negative 2 times 0. Now, of course, that is going to be easy enough because e to the 0 will be 1. So I'll have negative e to the negative 2m and then negative 1 times that will give me a plus 1 equals 0.5. Subtract the 1, multiply by a negative. I now have e to the negative 2m equals 0.5. Take the natural log of both sides. So I go uh, 0.5 natural log which is negative 0.693 divide by the 2, the negative 2, divide by 2, and I get 0.346 as m. All right, so remember all I did here was I took the natural log of both sides, which then gave me negative 2m equals natural log of 0.5, and then we divided by negative 2 which gave me m equals my final answer of 0.347. Now, before we want to accept that, let's just make sure that that makes sense. Okay, if this is up here at 2, then does it need to, how far does it need to go before it gets down to about 50%? I guess I, maybe I may not be able to reason that out, but 0.347 would be somewhere around here. And is that about half compared to that? No, it could be. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just accept that value. Trust me, it's right, 0 0.347 as the median.
all right? And that's our, that's it for the, the exponential one. So just get used to using exponential, recognizing the expected value and the variance, and that's pretty much it. Good luck.